السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This is the third slide show is the clinical case taking in obstetrics and the gynecology, and the title today is gynecological case taking. The main objective of the gynecological case taking is to reach the ideal gynecological diagnosis. The ideal gynecological diagnosis consists of three main items. The etiologic diagnosis, including the offending cause of the gynecological complaint. Anatomical diagnosis, including the disturbed anatomy due to the, the gynecologic disease. And the functional diagnosis, including the disordered function. Uh, this is a example for a ideal <clears throat> gynecologic diagnosis including the three previously mentioned items when we uh, say postmenopausal erythrocystocele second degree trend descent supravaginal elongation of the cervix cervical trophic ulcer and positive stress incontinence. Here, the postmenopause denotes the etiologic diagnosis because of the privation of estrogen, which was responsible during in the premenopausal period for maintenance of the support of the genital organs and. Erythrocystocele, rectocele, second uterine descent, is anatomical diagnosis because of the disturbed anatomy of these organs. Supravaginal elongation of the cervix due to prolonged traction of the descending uh, vaginal uterine uh, descent on the supravaginal portion of the cervix. Cervical trophic ulcer is a functional disturbance due to abnormal vasculature and congestion and positive stress incontinence due to hypermobility of the bladder neck. The first item in the uh, gynecologic case taking is history taking. The second is general abdominal and local examination. The third is special clinical tests. So any case taking consists of three main items. History taking in the first, second examination, including the general, general examination, abdominal examination, and local examination. The third part is clinical investigation needed for the specific case. Regarding the history taking in a case of gynecology, includes the following personal history, the complaint, ministerial history, obstetric history, past history, family history, sexual history in cases of infertility, and lastly, the present history. The first item in the personal history is the patient name. The patient name should be taken and the patient should be called with her name. Calling the patient with her name is a must. The second is the age. Knowing the age of a gynecologic case is of great help in diagnosis because certain gynecological disease are common in some age groups than others. For example, when the patient is in age group from delivery to nine years, let's say, the in infancy and child, early childhood. Common gynecologic disorders such as Percy crisis, which milk, and bigger genitalia, some tumors such as sarcoma betroids, some malignant 
جرم سيل تيومرز اوفيريان تيومرز بريكوشيس بيوبرتي فالفو فاجينالز اوف تشيلدرن and hydrogenic such as foreign bodies in the vagina and so on. When the patient is adolescent period, dysfunction trim bleeding is common and primary amenorrhea is diagnosed during this period. In child bearing period, pregnancy complications, especially bleeding due to abnormal pregnancies, infertility, genital infections, uh, uh, and benign tumors such as uterine fibroid. In the perimenopausal period, dysfunctional uterine bleeding due to a defic a deficiency, insufficiency of ovarian function, and benign, <coughs> more than malignant tumors. In the postmenopause, malignancy is more common than benign conditions. Personal history should include occupation of the patient. Some disease may be linked to certain occupations, such as cervical cancer is high is more common in patients with multiple sex partners. Genital prolapse is common in patients lifting weights or with chronic increase in abdominal pressure such as asthmatic patients or patients working in textile factories. Endometriosis may be linked to some environmental uh, uh, toxins such as uh, women working in painting factories. Marital status and number of living offspring is important item in the personal history because early as early as less than uh, 15 years when the sex sexual intercourse started it may predispose to endometrial cancer uh, sorry uh, cervical cancer due to affection of the transformation zone which is exposed to the vaginal environment at this age to the uh, 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 viral oncogenes from sexual intercourse or a sperm oncogene. The presence of sufficient number of children may be determining a factor in selection of the surgical procedure. For example, if there is borderline or malignant uh, ovarian tumor on one side and the patient has had not uh, completed her family Unilateral salpingo-oophorectomy is an option here until the patient completed her family, uh, then the uh, uh, radical treatment is indicated. And in cases of genital descent, when the patient had a <clears throat> advanced stage of uh, pelvic organ prolapse and not complete her family, conservative management to conserve the uterus for further fertility is indicated when the patient completes her family vaginal strictum and repair of the pelvic floor may be indicated. Special habits, special smoking may be a risk factor for cervical cancer. Personal history of the husband is important because <coughs> sorry uh, the, the, the husband's work may reflect the socioeconomic status of the couple. Uh, smoking, smoking husband may affect negatively on her spouse. On his spouse, uh, uh, that's say she may be a passive smoker when inhaling the exhausted smoke from her husband. The complaint. The gynecologic case may complain of one or more of the following five complaints. The, she may complain of pain, pleading, discharge, swelling, or infertility. Complaints should be in the patient's own words. 
without using scientific terms. Complaints, if more than one, should be arranged chronologically. Let's say, according to the onset of their occurrence, or they may be arranged according to their importance from the patient point of view. We come to the menstrual history. The items of the menstrual history include the following items in sequence. The menarche. Menarche is the first day, let's say the onset, of the first menses in women's life. Menarche is the climax of the pubertal events, including the thilark, which is the breast development, adrenarch, which is the axillary hair development, and pubarch, which is the, hair, the uh, pubic hair development, and ongoing growth spurt. After obtaining the dates of menarche, we ask for the cycle rhythm, which is regular or whether it is regular or irregular. The cycle length is asked for. Cycle length is a duration from the first day of the cycle to the first day of the next cycle. The normal cycle length ranges from 21 to 35 days, let's say from three weeks to five weeks duration. The duration of menstrual flow, it is the period of time during which menstrual flow, menstrual blood flows through the vagina. The normal range is from two days to eight days. The character of the flow is asked for. The character regarding amount of flow, color of flow, and odor should be mentioned. Dysmenorrhea is asked for, whether present or not. It is the pain related to menses, severe enough to incapacitate or to prevent the woman from doing her usual daily activities. The intermenstrual period is the period from the last day of menstrual flow to the first day of the next flow. In this period, we should ask about pain, bleeding, or discharge. However, the intermenstrual period has physiologic pain due to ovulation, which is called Mittelschmerz pain. This pain is explained by the escape of prostaglandin in the follicular fluid when ovulation occurs and this prostaglandin causes localized peritonitis around the area in, in contact with this follicular fluid. Also, the intermenstrual period may have physiologic spotting or bleeding which is called ovulation spotting ovulation spotting. This spotting is due to temporary decrease in the level of estrogen that compromise to less extent the endometrium that causes some scanty bleeding or this intermenstrual period may, may include a physiologic discharge uh, with a copious uh, transparent mucus discharging from the cervical glands into the vagina due to high estrogen level. This phenomenon is called ovulation cascade. The current use of contraception is asked for, especially hormonal contraception, as the are important in many factors. For example, when the patient uses combined oral contracept contraceptive pills, 
This cycle is a withdrawal, artificial cycle, not a cycle with ovulation. And so it is not a normal cycle, not suitable for calculation of pregnancy if occurs, not suitable for interpretation of physiologic events of the cycle. The first day of the last normal menstrual period should be known in the menstrual history because this is important in determining the gynecologic management or gynecologic operations or induction of ovulation and so on. All gynecologic operations are performed in the postmenstrual period except for the premenstrual endometrial biopsy that was a practice was best. It is not used nowadays and it was uh, used for determining or examination of the uh, endometrial type in the premenstrual period, whether it is secretory or follicular, and this is not uh, valid for the current gynecologic practice. These are a, a diagram to explain the parts of the menstrual cycle. Here is the first day of the menstrual cycle and here is the last day. So this is the menstrual flow and normally it is from two to, two, two to eight days in the average. The duration from the last day of the menstrual flow to the first day of the next menstrual cycle is called the intermenstrual period. The duration from the first day of the menstrual cycle to the first day of the next cycle is, is called the menstrual cycle length. The cycle length. Uh, uh, some term, terms should be known. The term menorrhagia is the definition of ex, 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 defined as excessive and or prolonged bleeding, cyclic bleeding. Metrorrhagia is a regular acyclic bleeding. Oligomenorrhea, the infrequent cycle, infrequent menstrual cycle, let's say the duration between the first day and first day is more than 35 days. Polymenorrhea, is frequent menstruation. Let's say the cycle recurs in a duration less than 21 days. Hypomenorrhea denotes a scanty amount of menstrual flow. Hypermenorrhea, excessive amount of menstrual flow, but with normal duration. However, these terms are all the terminology. The FIGO association had defined newer terms and definitions for menstrual abnormalities. The system is called palm coin, palm coin system. The palm include P for polyp, a for adenomyosis, L for leomyoma, M for malignancy and hyperplasia. Coin, C for coagulopathy, O for ovulatory disorders, previously known as dysfunctional thrombus bleeding, E for endometrial abnormality, I, iatrogenic, such as abnormal use of drugs that cause bleeding, especially hormonal drugs. N of coin is, uh, denotes not yet classified. Figu further classified the leomyoma into eight 
types. Type O or zero, pedunculated intracavitary. Type one, less than 50% of uh, of the fibroid is intramural. Type two, more than 50% of the fibroid is intramural. Type three, just contact the endometrium line. Type four, intramural. Type five, just contacting the serous coat of the uterus. Type six, less than 50% of the uh, fibroid is intramural. Type 7 sub uh, serous but not pedunculated. Type 7 sub serous pedunculated. Type 8 other extracorporeal fibroid, let's say, if it is broad ligamentary fibroid or cervical fibroid, it is called type 8. So, again, F0, blanculated intracavitary, when more than 50% of the fibroid intracavitary, but not blanculated, type 2, more than, less than 50% intracavitary, Type 3, just touching the endometrium, but mostly intrapural. Type 4, not uh, touching the endometrium, but it is intramural. Type 5, less than 50% subserous. Type 6, subserous, not branculated. Type 7, Pedunculated subserous. Type 8, extracorporeal. It is not in the uterine uh, body. It may be cervical, fibroid, intra, uh, intra ligamentary fibroid, broad ligamentary fibroid, or parasitic fibroid in elsewhere. Let's say if a fibroid arising from the round ligaments, it is classified as type 8. Some fibroids have more than one character previously described. It is called hybrid fibroid and assigned as two to five hundred fibroid, uh, hybrid fibroid, hybrid fibroid. Again, these equations may be used in description of the cause of uh, abnormal uterine bleeding in according to the latest figure classification. Obstetric history. We start obstetric The past history of similar condition should be asked for. Past history of medical disease such as diabetes mellitus, hypertension, pilharziasis, tuberculosis, irradiation, or drug sensitivity, past history of surgical operations, the uh, nature of the operation and date of the operation should be determined, past history of gynecologic operation, the nature, date of operation should be determined, past history of gynecologic therapy as gestogen therapy in cases of abnormal trine bleeding, the drugs duration of therapy and response to treatment should be all mentioned. Past history of contraception if not currently used. The family history of hereditary disease such as diabetes, hypertension, chromosomal abnormalities. Family history of familial non-hereditary disease such as rheumatic heart disease, tuberculosis, 
these theses result in common bad socioeconomic status and not familiar and, and not hereditary. Family history of similar condition in the family, this special importance in certain cases such as cancer family syndrome or Lynch syndrome, including ovarian, breast endometrial cancer, plus familial colonic polyposis. Uh, other conditions require asking for other uh, affected members of the family, such as androgen insensitivity syndrome, which are inherited as x linked from the mother, resulting in what's called testicular feminization syndrome. Sexual history is asked for in cases of infertility. The items of sexual history are frequency of coitus, normally two to three times per week, the position during coitus, the commonest position in our locality is female subine position. Presence of lipido. Lipido is the desire of female to perform sexual intercourse. If it is present or absent, it is mentioned as positive or negative. Lack of lipido is called frigidity. Presence of orgasm. The orgasm is the climax of sexual pleasure. It is mentioned as positive or negative orgasm. Dyspareunia is painful intercourse. It may be superficial or deep dyspareunia. Aparunia, let's say vaginismus, which is a violent reflex spasm of the levator in eye, perineal muscles and gluteal muscles and adductors of the thigh to make intromission impossible. It is usually had a psychic element. Use of lubricants is asked for. Lubricants are not beneficial and harmful and they may cause infertility because most lubricants are spermicidal. Flower seminus, it means escape of some semen from the vagina immediately after ejaculation. In most cases of fertile couples, some degree of flower seminus occurs. Postcoital vaginal douches, the female should be asked if she perform immediate postcoital vaginal douches or not, because vaginal douches are spermicidal and they may cause infertility. Uh, present history of a gynecologic case includes a analysis of the complaint regarding the, its character, the duration, the onset, acute, gradual, or insidious, the course, progressive, regressive, or stationary, what increase the complaint, what decrease the complaint, association of other symptoms, previous treatments, since what time, its duration, its type, and results of treatment. All these should be included in the analysis of the complaint. Related, the second item, after analysis of the complaint, uh, we should ask for related urinary and gastrointestinal symptoms. We come to the second item in case taking, which is clinical physical examination. Uh, examination of the gynecologic case consists basically of the following items. General examination, abdominal examination, local gynecologic examination. The local gynecologic examination includes vulvar inspection, vaginal palpation, pimanual examination, speculum examination, special clinical tests, in certain cases.
general examination we ask for the gait what causes abnormal gait in gynecology acute inflammatory conditions of the vulva may cause abnormal gait traumas hematomas of the vulva masses of the vulva may cause abnormal gait constitution by constitution we refer to the appearance of distribution of fat in the woman whether it is feminine or it is masculine feminine constitution means the pelvic girdle is larger than the shoulder girdle unlike the masculine constitution in which the uh, pelvic girdle is less than the shoulder girdle the belt the best equation for uh, exp 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 expression of the belt is the body mass index which is uh, the result of dividing the weight in kilograms over the uh, square height in meters we come after the belt to the vital sign uh, measurement including the pulse blood pressure uh, temperature and the respiratory rate general examination of the patient from the head to the heel including the head and neck breast examination chest examination heart examination limbs and back during general examination, we give some uh, 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 care to examination of the breast. Uh, Tanner classified the breast development into five stages. Stage one is the prepubertal. Stage two is a, just a part. Further enlargement is stage three and four until it, it reaches. Uh, type or stage 5 with, with full adult breast we should comment on the development of the breast uh, then we, we examine the breast for any mass and examine the skin of the breast for any abnormality then examine for the axilla for masses and so on. Uh, uh, Tanner also uh, 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 classified the pubic hair development into five stages: uh, stage one, prepubertal, until uh, the full adult uh, pubic hair development with upper transverse uh, border, and the uh, axillary hair is also divided, uh, according to Tanner, into three stages. Uh, no, uh, stage 1, uh, prepubertal, sparse hair and adult hair. It reached about the age of uh, nine, uh, 19 years. Uh, we, with examination of the breast, we divide the breast by two perpendicular uh, lines passing through the uh, nipple into six areas. The retroareolar Part and the upper outer quadrant, lower outer quadrant, upper medial quadrant, lower medial quadrant. These are five compartments, and the sixth compartment is the subaxillary tail of the breast. The breast is examined by two uh, hands and examined by the uh, palmar border of a uh, palmar aspect or palmar aspect of the fingers thyroid gland is examined we may stand in front of the patient like this and or may examine the thyroid from the back like this 
abdominal examination before examining the, uh, the abdomen we may divide the abdomen by two perpendicular lines passing through the umbilicus into right upper quadrant lower right lower quadrant uh, left upper quadrant and left lower quadrant or may divide it more specifically into nine areas by four lines two transverse lines and two perpendicular lines uh, 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 two transverse lines the upper transverse line is the subcostal uh, line and the, upper, the lower is the intercrestal line and the two per vertical lines are the midinguinal or mid axillary or mid uh, clavicular lines so the resultant areas are three right areas three left areas and three central areas the three right and left are hypochondrial lumbar and iliac the central are epigastric amplical and hypogastric or suprapubic areas and so we have nine areas for assigning the site of any finding during the abdominal examination abdominal examination includes inspection palpation percussion auscultation inspection for the contour of the abdomen movement of the abdomen with respiration subcostal angle whether acute or obtuse uh, the umbilicus and the skin also by inspection we note the hernial orifices divergation of the rectus muscle and the pubic, upper border of the pubic hair distribution whether uh, tapering or it is transverse palpation includes superficial palpation for tenderness rigidity and superficial masses and deep palpation uh, uh, we palpate liver spleen renal angles and abdominal mass or parietal masses we differentiate the abdominal intra-abdominal or parietal masses by asking the patient to raise her head and upper part of the body while she is lying in dorsal position without assisting herself with her hands and so this uh, this uh, movement uh, res uh, results in contraction of abdominal muscles if the mass becomes more evident it is above the muscle so it is parietal mass if it appeared less prominent or disappeared it is intra-abdominal mass percussion of the abdomen for dullness over the mass if the mass is found and shifting dullness for ascites and ovarian cyst ovarian cyst is negative for shifting dullness because it is a limited space in, in which the fluid moves so central dullness is always present in ovarian mass however in ascites shifting dullness is positive auscultation for the stainless sounds and for venous hum if there is dilated vein around the umbilicus an inspection of the eye may show jaundice inspection of the abdomen and this is a photo for cabot medusa this is uh, uh, the arm inspection it may shows spider nevi telangiectasia it may shows bruising for abnormal coagulation it may uh, 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 show scratch signs if there is cholestasis the hands may show palmar erythema the fingernails may be abnormal as clubbing or other abnormalities this is a photo for superficial palpation with the palmar surface of uh, the hand deep palpation may 
use two double hand technique. This is how to palpate the renal angle for in kidney enlargement. And this is the surgical anatomy of the renal angle, which is the angle between the last rib and sacrospinalis muscle. Sacrospinalis muscle and the last rib. This is the renal angle. This is a photo showing the percussion over the tropes area, shifting dullness edema, eliciting pitting edema of the foot, liver, right loop of the liver palpation, the upper, the upper border is detected by percussion. This is hand edema. Local gynecologic examination. The items, classical items of local gynecologic examination are vulvar inspection, vaginal palpation, by manual examination, speculum examination, special clinical tests under certain circumstances. However, the sequence of these steps may be changed according to a case. The patient position during examination may be dorsal position, which is the most common position, lithotum position for more exposure, frog-like position in children, chest knee position for examination of the uh, anterior uh, vaginal wall or if we need rectal examination. Exaggerated left lateral position, which is called Sims position in exploration of the anterior vaginal wall, especially in the vesicovaginal fistula examination. We come to the vulvar inspection we should know the normal anatomy of the vulva. The vulva consists of the moon's veneris, the labia majora, the labia minora, the clitoris, with the previous of the clitoris and frenulum of the clitoris, and the vestibule, which is the triangular area, bounded laterally by the labia minora and labia majora, anteriorly by the clitoris, posteriorly by the fusion of the labia minora, which is called the forchette, and fusion of the labia majora, which are called the posterior commissure. In the vestibule opens the external lateral meatus, the skin is gland around the external lateral meatus, the vagina, and parcelin ducts posteriorly in the posterior third of the labia majora. We search for the shape of the, uh, 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 the, the vulva, the hair distribution of the vulva, and the constitu constitu constituent of the vulva. Some females are found a circumcised. Circumcision is classified into type 1 circumcision with removal only of the clitoris, glands of the clitoris. Type 2, removal of the clitoris and the upper parts of the labia minora. Type 3, removal of the clitoris and both labia minora and according to healing or repair of the condition it may be completely completely occluded leaving a 
crypt, small crypt for drainage of menstrual blood, which is the severest form of uh, circumcision, and type, which is called type 4 circumcision, or Sudanese circumcision, or it may partially occluded, which is type 3 circumcision. We inspect the vulva for cysts, nodules, inflammation, infections, or certain cysts or can as cysts of canal of neck. This is masses of the vulva. This is called diloma acuminata. And this is a lipoma of the vulva. Masses, inflammation of parsolin. And this is extrusion of pus through the urethra in cases of uh, gonorrheal infection. Severe inflammatory conditions. Hematoma, tumors, some cases after inspection we are obliged to take a smear so we should postpone vaginal digital palpation until after taking the vaginal smear or vaginal swab using a casco speculum, disposable speculum or non or metal speculum inserted like that and a swab is rotated around the cervix taking uh, some cells, exfoliated cells for culture or for uh, fixation and examination for malignancy as in pipe smear. This is a method of taking a pap smear. We take X cervical smear with a uh, with iron spatula. Then we take endo cervical smear with a brush, and finally we take vaginal posterior fornical smear. And all these are spread over a slide fixed by absolute alcohol or fixation spray and uh, sent for examination, for cytologic examination. The second item in local gynecologic examination is digital vaginal palpation. The patient is lying in dorsal position. We insert first the index finger followed by the middle finger, edgewise until the middle of the vagina and then turn it 90 degrees so that the palmar surface of your examining fingers facing anteriorly to palpate the anterior vaginal wall and then turn it 90 degrees to palpate the lateral vaginal walls and posterior vaginal walls. Then we palpate the portion vaginalis and comment on the size of the Borsche vaginalis, the surface of the uh, Borsche vaginalis and face and surface and uh, uh, shape of the Borsche vaginalis, the shape of the external cervical os. We try to move the uh, Borsche vaginalis from side to side and uh, up down uh, until and detect if there is tender cervical motion or not. Uh, uh, we uh, go to by manual examination uh, before we withdraw our hand we insert we uh, palpate the uh, up, the uh, with lift with our left hand in the suprapubic region center of the suprapubic region to palpate the uh, and the, in the, the inner hand is in the anterior cervical fornix uh, we try to approximate our our hands to each other if we palpate the uterus uh, in between our hands, we palpate it as beer-shaped, firm, 
slightly tender mobile uh, mobile uterus. If we cannot uh, palpate the uh, uterus in between our hands, we shift our internal vaginal hand into uh, in the posterior fornix. We try to approximate our hands. If we palpate the uterus, the uterus is retroverted, flexed. Then we shift the internal hand to the uh, left uh, fornix for palpation of the left adnexa and the, to the other side to palpate the uh, right adnexa. Normally, the ovary is not palpable in average sized woman except in very thin women it may be palpated and it, it, it is tender it gives a sensation like a testicular pain in males uh, this uh, the, the, the next step is a, a speculum examination the most commonly used speculum is a cascus speculum we insert the cascus speculum by leg BV first as edgewise until the middle of the vagina we turn it by 90 degrees then we open its plates to the, like that open its, uh, its plates apart from each other and it is a self-retaining speculum then the cervix can be seen through the aperture of the uh, uh, casco speculum we can see the cervical, cervical bursi vaginalis and cerv external cervical os and the lateral vaginal furnaces while the anterior and posterior vaginal holes are obscured by the blades of the casco speculum. Uh, uh, some cases we require a sounding of the uterus. The indications of the sound will be mentioned later in the next slide. Uh, uh, this is a Sims speculum. Sims speculum is used for visualization of the uh, anterior vaginal wall, especially in uh, diagnosis of vesicovaginal fistula. But Sims speculum is uh, inserted while the patient is exagger in exaggerated left lateral position. The indications of the trine sound include measurements of the length of the cervical triangle. Bare rectum examination may be indicated in certain cases. Uh, 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 rectal examination is indicated for pelvic uh, examination in the version. We use it as a substitute for BV and by manual examination for evaluation of the uterus. So we can do by manual examination the version with one finger in the rectum and the other in the suprapubic region of the version uh, 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 for detection of adnexal and pelvic masses. Diagnosis of parametrial infiltration in cancer cervix to complete the uh, 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 clinical uh, staging of cancer cervix. It may be done for detection of masses in the cul-de-sac, especially if endometriosis and ca metastatic cancer ovary. Uh, a diagnosis of rectal infiltration in gynecologic malignancy, especially cancer cervix or cancer vagina or vault cancer. Uh, a differentiation between the true and false rectocele. We introduce the rectal finger like that and the patient is asked to peer down. If the finger can be felt through the vagina in the prolapsed mass, this is a true rectocele. seal. If the prolapsed mass is above the finger and finger is obscured and cannot be felt in the vagina, this is a false rectocele. seal. PR also can be used for diagnosis of rectovaginal fistula. Here, the large rectovaginal fistula can be diagnosed with, with a, a, a PR. Uh, 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 rectovaginal examination, combined rectovaginal examination is indicated 
for evaluation of the rectovaginal septum in case of endometriosis and in case of cancer cervix if, if there is infiltration. Uh, uh, also, it can be used for diagnosis of anterior seal and differentiate it from rectal seal by what's called Malbus test. We introduce the middle finger in the rectum, the index finger in the vagina, and ask the patient to peer down. If the mass, prolapsed mass, hits the tips of uh, uh, the examining finger, it is an anterior seal. If the mass on peering down separates the two fingers from each other, it is a, a, a rectal seal, and this is what's called Malbus test. Evaluation of the tone of the levator in eye muscle in case of prolapse preoperatively for proper, for proper uh, 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 repair of the pelvic floor. Here we give, we uh, introduce the middle in the rectum, middle finger in the rectum, and the index finger in the uh, vagina, and uh, put our fingers at the insertion of the levator in eye muscle on either side, the right levator in eye, left levator in eye, and ask the patient to uh, 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 to hold herself, and we can palpate between our two fingers the bulk of the view rectalis. Diagnosis of the rectovaginal uh, fistula, large rectovaginal fistula can be uh, felt by combined rectovaginal examination. Clinical tests for urinary incontinence, uh, uh, these are old methods for uh, 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 evaluation of uh, stress incontinence. Uh, however, uh, the, they are all substituted by the more recent urodynamic studies. So, any case of pelvic organ prolapse, including the bladder, must be evaluated for urodynamic study before the surgical attempt of repair. The older clinical urinary uh, test for urinary incontinence excludes stress tests, use of tests for incontinence, incontinence, ponies test, which is a more a, a, a advancement for this test, and Marshall Marchetti test, uh, Horse Hodge Smith test, Hodge Smith a pissary test, a, a bad test which is still used uh, uh, for a, a rough clinical evaluation of stress incontinence. A Q tip the test also is used nowadays with limited use. A clinical test procedure used for in cases of pelvic mass to differentiate pelvic 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 abdominal from purely abdominal mass uh, this is done abdominally by trying to get below the lower border of the mass if the lower border is reachable the mass is purely abdominal and vice versa a, a, a clinical test to differentiate large ovarian cyst from ascites by doing shifting dullness. In a site, the shifting dullness is positive, while in ovarian cysts, dullness is constantly central with absent dullness in the flanks when the patient turns on her side. To differentiate uterine from adnexal mass, uh, 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 the uterine mass is usually central, uh, adnexal mass lateral. Uh, uterine mass, uh, there, uh, there is a transmission of movement of the cervix to the uterine mass, while there is no transmission of the movement of the cervix to the adnexal mass. Sulcus between the mass and the uterus is absent when there is a, a, when the mass is uterine, and the sulcus is present when the mass is adnexal. Consistency of the uterine masses are mostly solid, and adnexal mass may be solid or may be cystic. A clinical test to diagnose vaginal fistula, including uh, intravesical dye test, we uh, uh, fill the red bladder with diluted solution of methylene blue or indigo carmine, careful inspection of the anterior vaginal wall and vaginal vault with Sims speculate in Sims position for the color of the urine, uh, or may use uh, three tampon test. The three cotton swabs, three cotton poles are introduced one after the other. 
uh, and if the 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 upper uh, uh, swab if uh, stained with uh, dye uh, with with, with uh, the upper uh, upper swab uh, uh, the patient is asked to walk for t 10 to 15 minutes then the tampons are removed and examined for colored uh, blue if methylene blue or red if indio carmine uh, the lowest tampon is only colored if, if the lower lowest tampon is only colored one there is no fistula and but it is a transurethral incontinence uh, if the upper tampon is wet and stained blue there is ifzyco vaginal fistula if the upper one is wet but not stained it is urethrovasical uh, urethrovaginal fistula uh, the flat tire test, the patient is put in neat chest position and the vagina is filled with water or saline, intravesical installation of carbon dioxide or air through a erythral catheter, localization of a small fistula is done by visualization of gas bubbles uh, in the vagina. Uh, a clinical test to diagnose rectal vaginal fistula, such, uh, such as a probe test, a small caliber probe is pushed through the vaginal orifice of the fistula uh, can be felt by rectal examination. Uh, another method is the methylene blue test. Methylene blue is the installation from the vaginal orifice can be seen in the rectum by rectoscope. A curse test, a full catheter 10 milliliter balloon is inserted into the anal canal while the vagina is is painted with concentrated solution of soap and water, uh, the balloon is infil inf inflated with 10 milliliter saline to make the anus tight. As the rectum is distended with air from a syringe attached to the fullest catheter, air bubbles can be seen at the vagina and to locate the uh, 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 the fistula site. Here. We end our uh, slideshow for gynecological case taking. I wish this slideshow helpful to be helpful for you in your practice and your studying uh, uh, gynecology. Thank you very much, Osama Warda.